once, she was quite beautiful. But that was another lifetime. Now, she has a new face. A new form. And revenge on her mind. Would you be willing to die for your friend? Craig is dead. That's his dead. Murdered. His luck ran out. That's all. But I know this guy. Even he couldn't keep her alive, but he recreated her. The perfect combination of android and fatal attraction. I think I know who did it, and I'm certain that there's more to come. For once in your life, walk away from something before you get hurt. If you try to go to the feds or the DA, I will kill you. If you think you can escape... See how terribly wrong you all were? You simply don't know her. Even hell has no fury bloody enough for this woman. Pretty. Very pretty. Steel and lace. He's lost his shoe again, huh? Spread for Dean Richmond. Mm. He was the one who died last month. Mm. Cancer, they say. We know what that means these days. Uh -huh. I got tired of waiting. Mom, 
Mm -hmm. What's cancer? It's an illness, honey. How do you get it? Oh, in various ways. Do little, do babies get it? Sometimes. Do little boys get it? Sometimes they do. But if you eat all your vegetables... That can help. You eat all your vegetables, don't you, Mommy? Mm-hmm. That's good. Are you going to be a gentleman today and help Mrs. Roberts with the kids at nap time? City Magazine. Our top story. I'm late. In today's news, somewhat of a surprise for many on the political scene, Samuel Benson, a well-liked figure at City Hall for many years, and who only recently became a member of Parliament, Excuse me, could you turn that speculation up, last night, two reporters camped outside his office that he's withdrawn from the upcoming Liberal leadership race for undisclosed reasons of health. And today, to be sure, the nation's capital is abuzz with precisely what this politician meant by undisclosed reasons. God, you have a great shape. For the whites like mine, you gotta do it. Come on. You gotta manage your body and your bedroom like your boy girl. God, <laughs> uh, everything is all right with the two of you again. I've seen her later today. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, go. Let's, go. Let's see what you do. This. All right, Larry, please. Yeah? Alright. That's terrific. No work. Be good. Beautiful. Morning, Captain. Hi. All's quiet on Western Front. This is the urgent stuff. This way, right way. I really want some food. Hello, Larry. Hey, Larry? Yeah. I think Raymond sweats anymore. He's gonna float away. Uh, Dean Richmond's uh, publicist called and wants to know if you're gonna make this spread a tribute to his work. You know. Of, uh, I'll tell him this is the second time we've featured him in the magazine this year, and uh, that'll be enough. Yeah, I think that's what he'd say, so that's what I told him. <laughs> Good. Good, so, boss, what do you think? He worked miracles. <laughs> that's why I wanted you to do this job. When we won that award last week, you realized that I thanked you in my speech. Right on. I said I couldn't become the art director that I am today if it weren't for Amy Donaldson. Wow, I believe I read something about that. <laughs> <laughs> what he really means, Captain, is that he's gonna hit you up for a raise. Hmm. You better get a move on, you're gonna be late. Is that right? Mm -hmm. God, you're right, huh? Thanks, Mom. Have fun, kids. It won't be very long. All right, Mrs. Miller. We'll see you in six months. Hey. Hello, Harry. Go Sorry away. I'm late. That's all right. You gave me a chance to see a patient who didn't have an appointment. Well, how do we feel? It's not as easy the second time around, is it, Harry? 
Well, both Carl and I thought you shouldn't have waited this long. I feel tired a lot of the time. Oh? Maybe a little iron. You had the same problem when you were carrying Brian. What kind of tests are we going to do today? Oh, well, a similar round of tests. To check your sugar levels, your iron levels, a protein test. Or oh, we have arranged for an ultrasound to be done today. There's one other test I think maybe we should do. Yes. An HIV test? What? It's uh, called the ELISA test, I believe it's a blue... Uh, Amy, I know what it is. Is there something you want to tell me? Is that a medical question, Harry? Because I don't think I want to answer it. We're living in the 80s, aren't we? Well, I never even had a patient ask me for one. All the brochures, the newspaper ads, they all say that expecting mothers should absolutely... Hey, Carl. Carl isn't the expecting mother here, is he? Do you have any reason to believe you may have been in contact with the AIDS virus? I know people who... I just... <laughs> I just want to be able to tell my baby that I did everything possible to make sure that he or she came into this life with a clean slate, Harry. All right. Other than tired, uh, are you feeling okay? I'm fine. Just a bit of swollen glands. Could chalk it up to going to sleep with wet hair in an air conditioner, I guess. Have you asked Carl about this? Why don't we go into that examination room? Sorry, I'm late. I guess I forgot how long it takes. Especially when there is two of you. Yeah. <laughs> there is Thank you. This place looks fabulous. Back in one hour. Are you nervous? Are you kidding? The talk around town is that tonight's opening at the gallery is the place to be, shall we? You are still coming, aren't you? Of course, idiot. Toast to the city's most successful gallery owner. Mm. Shall we? At least that's what people think. <laughs> the power of the press is truly amazing. I still sometimes ask myself, how did a little girl from Normandy, who majored in shy psychology at McGill, ever end up running an art gallery? <laughs> It's interesting how a divorce can change one's direction. Mama always said, marry a rich man and you will end up a wealthy divorcee. <laughs> Et voilà. Wealthy, wise, <laughs> and currently in love with this cute little banker from Paris. <sighs> mm. You know what? Mm. I'm still practicing shy psychology. How so? Have you spoken to an artist lately? <laughs> mm hmm fair maiden who bears my hair. Romeo, you are so romantic. Candlelight dinner at the Ritz. <laughs> I put words in my mouth again. Mm. Tonight is Suzanne's opening. We're not even dressed. Good, then we don't go. Oh, yes, we do.
strange contraption of rust. You've got the best in the city all gathered here together to look at a bunch of rusty scrap metal. Oh, do you call that art? I think it's a statement of our society. I'm going to buy you <laughs> pen by numbers for Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me, I have to grab that lady from the gazette. <laughs> she is such a snob. She is my best friend. Yeah. Well, I can't imagine you two in high school together telling each other everything. Everything. Oh, everything. <laughs> what about me? Almost everything. Amy. Ah. So good to see you. Thanks for the flowers. This look fabulous. Thank you. Carl, this is Pierre Matthew. He was uh, Dean Richmond's friend. It's my husband, Carl. Sam Benson's over there. I haven't seen him for years. Come on. Sam, how are you? It's great to see you. Hi. What are you doing here? Good to Doesn't see the you. capital have enough rust of its own? You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm just in town for a couple of days, so I thought I'd drop by. Good. You remember my wife, Amy, don't you? I certainly do. As lovely as ever. I love Sam. I heard about you today on the radio. Oh, there's an election coming. Voters love an underdog. You're in the media. You should know enough not to put complete faith in all the news from the Capitol. You know... <clears throat> I, uh, I know we can't stand each other, my little cabbage, but a client of mine is in desperate need of an accountant. Excuse us. Amy's not the accountant. I'm flattered by your concern for my health. I hadn't realized I'd made such an impression. Amy. I was very fragile then, Sam. And you're not anymore? Yes, I am. But in a very different way. I can see the accountant has finally balanced his books. Goodbye, Sam. I think separation was the best thing that could have happened to our marriage. I was miserable. I just wanted to be held so bad. It's good, isn't it? I love you. Do you love me? I love our marriage counselor. <laughs> do you love me? Which one of us do you ask you? <laughs> what, do you think we disturbed him? I don't think she minded at all. Really? I know I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got your parents tonight. Bye. Come on, kiddo. It's amazing what can be accomplished in just one week, isn't it, Captain? This cover's gonna win us another award. He really was a superb designer, wasn't he? It's ironic how death can make somebody more celebrated. Well, Van Gogh wasn't all that famous in his own life. I found him when he was just starting out. I think I wrote the first article about him when I was still at the Tribune. People back then didn't like his stuff, thought it was too loud, but I liked it. We got to be really good friends. Whenever he had a gala, I got the flowers. When he got sick, I didn't even visit him in the hospital. Don't worry, Captain. This cover will make up for it and more. I'd hardly say that. Amy Donaldson's office. It's Dr. Bloomer. One moment, please. It's lunchtime. You want anything? Hi, Harry. Amy. I want you to come to my office right away. Hey, I'm on a deadline. What's more important here? You make this sound serious. Amy, please come over right away. I don't know what to say. 
But he's thought of it as a formality. I never thought that one of my patients... Uh, I'm retiring next year. I, I don't quite know where to go from here. I'm a family physician. Isn't there some kind of other test besides this ELISA test? When that test is positive, they perform automatically something called a Western blot test. It's the confirmatory test. You are HIV positive, Amy. What does that mean? That you have been exposed to the virus, that the antibodies are present in your bloodstream, and that you could well expose someone else to it. But I have AIDS. It hasn't really been around long enough to give an absolute answer. So? So. I want you to refrain from sexual activities unless you practice safe sex. Safe sex? Using a condom. Although some say that in itself is no concrete guarantee. Real safe sex means avoiding actual intercourse and avoiding oral sex. Deep kissing is probably not a very good idea either. It hasn't been shown conclusively that the virus is passed on through the saliva, but it hasn't been totally discounted either. And that there is blood. Should you cut yourself, don't let anyone come into contact with it. And of course, I want Carl and Brian to come in for testing as soon as possible. What about... A mother and a fetus share the same immune system. Have you been faithful? What? Well, you and Carl were separated a while back. You have been monogamous. Yes, Carl. Look. I had a blood transfusion when I had Brian five years ago. How? How long does this thing take to manifest? We don't know. We just don't know enough. All we do know is it's scaring the hell out of everyone. You are going to tell Carla, aren't you? He was one of my first patients when I came to this country. He was just a little boy. You are planning to tell him? Yes. As soon as I find the words.
smells great, Isabella. It's Spanish chicken, senor. Mom, tell me the difference between a Spanish chicken and a Canadian chicken. I don't know, Brian. You tell me. Spanish ones speak Spanish. I don't think you're destined for a career in comedy, my son. Well, my boy, the way this country's going, Canadian chicken will soon be speaking Spanish as well. I'm just very thankful that they haven't made it to Beaconsfield yet. Make it sound like an invasion. Carl, you didn't tell us that your housekeeper was, well, Spanish. She's Colombian, actually. So? Well, I mean, is it good for Brian in his formative years to be around someone who doesn't properly speak either of our official languages? She's teaching him Spanish, Mother. Well, if you ask me... He didn't. Honey, is there something wrong? I guess I'm coming down with the flu. Well, I keep on telling Carl that you shouldn't be working, Amy. Not in your condition. Now, in my day, it was different. We took the time, and I was glad to take the time to stay at home and raise my family properly. I told you I've got the flu. I don't want to give it to you. I'm a man. I can take it. Give it to me. No! I think I understand what you're saying now. You're saying no. I can accept that. I can. Look. I know the understanding compassion mail your magazine is always saying it's so hard to find. It's all under control. Go search your cereal. Can I cut the bread? I've already done that. I'll eat your breakfast. It's not very healthy. Can you crack the eggs? The eggs are already cracked. Now go and eat your breakfast now and stay away from the stove. I don't want you to burn yourself. You know how much I love to crack the eggs. And you know how much I like repeating myself? Look, just get off the counter, okay? Do you understand English? Brian! Just, just leave it. Mommy's gonna clean it up. Don't be mad at me. Just leave it. Oh, now look what you. Carl, Carl, come down here. Brian's cut himself. Honey, I'm still shaved. Come to the kitchen now. I need your help. What's going on? Oh, come here. Let me think. You made it sound like he slashed his wrist. Why do you want to burn your eggs? And I told you I've got the flu. No, 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 no. Daddy's going to kiss your finger better today, honey. No, Mommy's kisses are magic. They make <laughs> us all better. That sounds like an offer you can't refuse. Yeah. Mommy's kisses are magic. I can help you, you know. Help me at what? When you get the baby, I've been practicing at daycare with a dog. I told Mrs. Roberts that I'm going to be a brother. Oh, uh, yeah, but not right away, you know. It takes time. Oh, I know. It takes nine weeks. Months, my dear, months. 
Oh, right. How do you know that? Mrs. Roberts told me. She did, huh? What else did she tell you? They had make a fine brother. Yeah? Well, she's right about that. You certainly would. How would you feel if you didn't get to be a brother? Alone. I don't know. Alone, I guess. Have a good day. so I get surprised you. I succeeded, Larry. You surprised me. What can I do for you? It's a great cover, isn't it? It's an excellent cover. Thank you. Uh, I've been offered a position elsewhere. And? Well, I don't really want to take it. It's just... It's just that they've offered you more money. We all got to look out for number one, right? Right. So take it. What? Take it, Larry. Good luck. But, Amy... Uh... Look, you want me to plead with you not to go? I won't. My coffers are empty. And if the fact that I gave you your start in this business and that we've made a team, a team that it's changed the way people look at fashion, if that's not enough to make you want to stay here, then go away. Good luck. I'm sorry you feel that way. So am I. <clears throat> I guess I'll be finished as of next week, then. I guess so. Fine. So? <clears throat> what a jerk. Loyalty's a rare thing these days. Type a memo informing him I want him out of here by the end of the day. Captain, are you sure? Positive. And close the door behind you, please. Good morning. I have a friend who has just tested HIV positive, and I'm wondering what kind of precautions I should take. When did you find out? I... She... What's your name? Amy. Amy, don't be frightened. One of the hardest times to handle is when you just find out. Amy, my name is Heather. Matt Pearson, you know, the collector from New York, bought four of them. And I'm going there Saturday to direct traffic. City Hall is thinking of putting one up in the park. We don't have to worry about it getting rusty, huh? <laughs> That's for sure. And what's more, I've made this man with definitely business. Um, Martini, dry, very dry. I'm going to have a double chocolate milkshake with cherries and strawberries and a half a banana. Last time you had one of those was when you thought you flunked your biology exam. The bees, knees, 
I haven't heard this expression for a very long time, especially with a French accent, <laughs> my dear. <laughs> I know. I'm showing my age and my heritage. But this guy is fabulous. I am an absolute last. Maybe it's love, who knows. What happened to the banker? His wife flew in from Paris. But Manuel, this new friend's name, is Hans. Excuse me. Sizzling. Manuel? Manuel? Mm -hmm. A man with a white stuff. And may I say, a lot of it. <laughs> You're bad. And you are upset. About what? You tell me. Tell me all about this guy. He's a courier who came into the gallery last Friday. A courier? How old is Manuel? Twenty. And don't you breathe a word. I don't need you getting Victorian on me now. It's gorgeous. And he just happens to like a woman who is fifteen... Twenty years his senior? You always wear a stickler for detail. I've never liked that quality in you. Anyway, Amy, he makes me feel like I'm 20 again. Remember that age, can you? I know. It seems so far away, doesn't it? But I feel so good when I am with him. So when's the wedding? Now that, my dear, is a silly question. Do you... Do you practice safe sex? Now, that is an even sillier question. Are you feeling okay? You look awful. I still love you nonetheless. Suzanne. I got a confession. I've got the flu. about it? Talk about what? Carl. I'm going now, Captain. Hey, are you okay? You don't look so hot. I can't seem to get rid of this stupid flu. My head is boiling, my glands are swollen, and I'm sweating all over. You should take a few days off. I think I can handle things around here. Doing that. You run your own magazine, single handed and blindfolded. And hey, that's your ambition, not mine. But I could be coaxed into going along with it. Minus the blindfold. Really? Oh, God, I think maybe I should just go home and soak in a hot bath, see if I can sweat this thing out. A hot rum toddy wouldn't hurt either. See you, Captain. Have a good weekend. Hey, Laura, when did you start calling me Captain? Sure <laughs> Why? On the very first day we met, I watched you in an editorial meeting. You were in complete control. See ya. softball game. I got Isabella to do that for me. I read there were political problems with the divestment. Tough day? I don't think I've ever had a worse one. I 
can't believe you've been walking around like this for a week. Why didn't you tell me? Didn't Harry tell you you can't catch it from a hug? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. This was between you and me. Yeah. Well, there are doctors across the country who would argue that point. Could it have been you? Me? Oh. No, at least I don't think so. I'm clean, Amy. And I'm not. Neither do I. I. I should. I know. I should have told you before. God, I wish I could have told. I wish I could have told somebody. You didn't tell Suzanne. Maybe it was the transfusion. Who knows? I've been doing some research on my own, and I know that you don't pick up something like this from a toilet seat. That transfusion was over five years ago. I don't like your tone of voice. Nobody knows how long it takes. I'm to... only going to ask this once. What in the hell did you do that year we were apart? Do you want me to believe that you were celibate? I used a condom. I used a condom. Now, what in the hell did you do? What about you? Did you seek solace? From Dean Richmond's friends? Did you do the party circuit? I only wanted to do the best thing for our baby. Don't you walk out of me. Close over. Close over. You are my husband. This is as worse as it gets. I need you. I might be dying. When you left me two years ago, I needed somebody. But I had an affair with Sam Benson. You and Brian had better get checked. Yeah. I gotta go. What about the baby? Huh? I've already talked with Harry about it.
Amy. I need a hug. Remember when we used to say that? When all hell was breaking loose. Come here, you. Am I interrupting something? No. Manuel just left. He went home to his mother for cookies and milk. So did Carl. I see. Okay. Before we start to TCB. TCB. Taking care of business, baby. Right on. First things first. You get your butt into my bedroom, get out of those wet clothes. I'm going to prepare her some hot cocoa. And you are going to talk. If you refuse, I'm tossing you back out in the wind. Love you, Susan. You better missing my favorite TV show. I always like to hear stories from the beginning, even fairy tales. But something tells me this is no fairy tale. I'm scared. I don't buy it. Maybe Manuel would like it if I did. Make me laugh. Then start talking. Remember those tests I took? You know all the brochures that say mothers-to-be should take an HIV test just to be on the safe side? Mm hmm I took the test. And it came back positive. I don't think finished telling me the story. What a lose my baby. Carl freaked out when you told him, right? I wish I had told him. I couldn't, I... Bloomer's an old friend of his, he got worried. He got scared. And, and then there's Sam Benson. Stop right here. You don't have to feel guilty. You are not to blame. There is no one really to blame. So, my dear Carl, packed it in. Doesn't he read anything except the business sections of the newspapers? Guess not. Do. Hmm. Love yourself. Continue loving yourself. And don't you ever Come back. 
They all used to. I just want to be alone. I understand. Uh, I leave now. Gracias. Finally tonight, there's the tragic story of the 10-year-old boy, Bobby Stewart, a hemophiliac who was infected with the AIDS virus. He was removed from his school and from his friends this morning in response to a near-violent protest by a parents' association. More from Patricia Manning. It was here today that parents from our community personified the terror brought on by the dreaded AIDS virus. Gonna turn yellow. <coughs> if you keep on smoking, Uncle Harry's gonna beat you at racquetball. I don't play with Dr. Bloomer anymore. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. Mm. Why is that? Because doctors help people get better. Sometimes. My artists are insane, my mother has lumbago, Manuel has migraines, and I, darling, I'm sick of seeing you looking like such a mess. Now listen up. Four days of feeling sorry for yourself is all you get. So, when I called from the airport and Laura told me you were still at home, sick, I said to myself, OK, girl, put yourself in a cab and get over there. I don't need a nurse. Oh, no. <laughs> you need a hairdresser. Why don't you just leave? Don't shut me out. I am the only one you have got right now. Well, thanks for the reminder. I really needed that. 
there is another reminder. You do not have AIDS. Do you hear me? You do not have AIDS. I hate that word. It's ugly. It's not a word. It's an acronym. E-I-D-S. AIDS. Shut up! Listen to me. You have been exposed to the virus, that's it. Some HIV positive people may never end up getting AIDS. You don't know that. You don't know. Who does? But I am a firm believer in the power of positive thinking. It has certainly helped me a lot. This is different. No way. You are my best friend in the whole world. And I am not going to sit back and watch you wheel yourself into this. Now, go, take a shower, and we are going to that counseling center on Atwater and start acting rationally about all this. Think about this baby. Right now, it's practicing more common sense than you are. It's continuing to live. This is not like you. This is not the lady I know. Don't you think I'm also scared? But I'm not going to leave you, Amy. I'm not. Don't worry, we didn't alert the press. Come on. John, do you have a uh, case to Yes. Can I help you, ladies? Yes. We'd like to see a counselor. Anyone in particular? No, it's our first Actually, time. Actually, we'd like to see Heather. Is she here? Sure is. Just got back from lunch. I'll go get her. Whether Manuel likes it or not, this is the way it is. Oh, hello. Hi, I'm Heather. Hello, Heather. I am uh, probably don't remember me. I talked to you a couple days ago. My name's Amy. Oh, yes. I, I remember you all right. I still hear the phone slamming in my ear, but I, I'm just kidding, Amy. Welcome. I see you brought your friend with you. Oh, no. Um, it's not... I mean, it's uh, not her. It's me. I'm the one. I know. <coughs> I know. Come. Follow me. Come. Oh, excuse the mess, but I get so caught up with everything else. The cleaning up just gets pushed further and further down on my to-do list. I know what you mean. Heather, um, Suzanne dragged me down here today. I think she's probably right. I feel so lost. Alone. Alone. <sighs> it is amazing to see how people react to this thing, isn't it? Look, the government isn't spending enough on research and... and the right wingers keep on spreading the fear, the ignorance. Right, and, and that propels certain reactions we would never have thought possible. Families abandoning their children. Hospitals refusing to treat them. This is a test of our society's moral fiber, Amy. And from where I sit, I'm sad to say society's flunking this test with flying colors. So, what do you do here? We offer support, moral and financial. 
We send out a monthly newsletter. We serve as a network to try to bring people together. We have picnics and dances, important things. And we, we have group therapy sessions because we feel people really need to talk it out. And we try to educate. You see, see AIDS is not our real enemy. It's ourselves and those around us. Look, I know, knew Dean Richmond. He's dead. Yes, Dean. Dean was a volunteer with us right to the end. He was a terrific guy. He chaired our PWA committee. PWA? People with AIDS. Oh. We you see, almost all of us are volunteers at this center. I meet people here that inspire me so much. I have never met such courageous individuals. It took a lot of courage for you to come here, didn't it? The fashion editor of a top magazine. How do you know who I am? Don't be so shocked. I've seen you on TV. Yeah, I know I don't dress like it, but I'm a big fan of City Magazine. Look, I tested HIV positive. Look at me. Look at me. What am I going to do? First of all, don't panic. Do you feel sick? I have got sore, a sore throat and swollen glands, all right? OK. Do you have diarrhea? No. Do you have night sweats? Anything no. like that? Who's your doctor? Harry Bloomer. Never heard of him. Well, I'm his first case. I think I ruined his retirement party. I've had both the ELISA test and the Western blot test. Those blood tests are not 100% reliable, are they? No, nothing's 100%. But it's all we've got at this point. Science is dealing with this thing as best it can, but there are holes in the fabric. So, so, I'm assuming, Amy, that you're a member of a low-risk group. But of course. There is a percentage of those in low-risk groups, even after the confirmatory test, whose results could indeed be false positive. I mean, people can slip through the cracks, you know. Mistakes can happen. There's even the chance of human error in reporting test results. Well, those people down in the labs are only human after all. I always advise people in low-risk groups to offer retesting. Amy, that's something your doctor should have suggested to you. But as you say, you were his first case. I think I'd pay him another visit. No, not him. OK. Then see somebody else and get retested. Are you telling me, Amy? It's not an everyday occurrence. But for those in low risk groups, okay, a false positive test is not out of the realm of possibility. It's good to get a second opinion, right? Of course, absolutely. And a third and a fourth doesn't hurt either. <laughs> My motto is never say die. I like you. I should go out for, for a drink sometime. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Heather. You're welcome, Amy. It's called hope. We need it. We need anything that'll help us get through this. We. I have got the cutest doctor. You are going to adore him. When he looks at you with his deep blue bedroom eyes, you are not going to think twice about laying low on that stretcher. <laughs> hey, big guy. You all ready? 
Listen. You want to call mommy? Yeah. Hi, mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Hello, baby. How are you? I miss you so much. Me too. Grandma can't cook. I hope you didn't tell her. Uh-huh, I did. When can you come and get me, Mommy? I'll have to talk to your daddy, but I hope it's really soon. Mommy, I got a present for you, but I didn't have time to finish it. Yeah, I know. I saw it. You peeked? <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful, Brian. It's just beautiful. Did you get the present I sent you? In the mail? No. You want to speak to Daddy? Sure. Talk to mommy. Yeah. Give me a break. Hello, Amy. How are you? Hi. I'm up and down. Our tests were negative. Thank God. Well, I'm smoking again. Amy, listen. I'm sorry. Dad's waiting in the car and we have to go to church. So bye for now. Bye, Carl. Hi, Mama. Happy Mother's Day. Hello, Mrs. Donaldson. You're looking good. Thank you, Doctor. I'm glad that Suzanne brought you to see me. I, um... Uh, I've never come across a patient with this problem at your age. What? Oh, I don't know how to put this. Um, you have tonsillitis. And? And what? I wasn't tested for tonsillitis, doctor. What about my HIV test? Negative. Pardon? Your HIV test came back negative, Mrs. Donaldson. And the fetus is doing just fine. Wait a minute. How, how do I know your test is right, Doctor? Do I need a second opinion on a second opinion? Is there another test that I should take? Can I trust you, Dr. Fitzpatrick? Is, is my baby okay? Am I... Am I all right? <sighs> I used to think that doctors were Superman. My dad was a doctor, you know, the kind that made house calls. He could do no wrong. My father still is one. A surgeon. Currently in court, fighting a malpractice suit. When my first patient died, Mrs. Donaldson, I stopped thinking of myself as Superman. I know Dr. Bloomer quite well. And I called him with the test results. He's very happy. And relieved. You know, I, I, I wouldn't blame him if I were you. We're all still just learning about this thing. Slowly. Too slowly. Well, I guess that's the end of patient confidentiality, huh, Doctor? That's still a thorny issue. Well, there's a lot of doctors who won't even treat AIDS patients. It all comes down to one word. Fear. I think it's ignorance. One and the same, aren't they? Oh, Dr. Fitzpatrick, I'm back in the land of the living. What are we going to do about my tonsils? Brian? 
Mummy's well. Mummy's well. Yeah, Mummy's well. I'm coming to pick you up right away, okay? Mummy's okay. husband in? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Donaldson. He's not here. He's in internal revenue all day overseeing an audit. Daycare. You looking forward to that? You know what I'm going to dream about tonight? <clears throat> you and me, too. Next time you're sick. Well, I'm not sick, honey. Daddy said you are. Well, you made a mistake, that's all. Next time you're sick, I don't want to go away. I'll make sure you stick around when I have my tonsils out. Oh, it doesn't hurt. I had my tonsils took out last year. You get to eat lots of ice cream. Thank you, Doctor. Now you get some sleep. Night, night, blow out the light. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Don't let the bed bugs bite. You're gonna make a great brother. So I guess I'll just call back later. She... she won't be in later either. She won't. Um, are you a friend of hers? Hello? Hello? Flowers. Mm.
on the bed. <laughs> this is the same bed Dean Richmond was in, you know. There's a lot to learn about Linguini. I can always get the food critic from the magazine to come down and pay him a visit. Wildest fantasies as a child. You wanted to be a mom? Well, you still could be. Captain, you're too polite. The Protestant upbringing. You know, Laura, you could be an excellent writer. I read your reports, your letters. You want to be a journalist? I got your first assignment. You're kidding. How did you know? There's a feature I've been thinking about for a while. It's not about fashion. It's not at all about fashion. But fashion's our department. Listen, I've been around here six and a half years. If I can't get a story placed, I think you're the perfect writer for it. Can I still call you Captain? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what's the assignment? It's about a woman. And the place that she spent most of her time. And can I interview her? You can't. She's dead. Rahamim <laughs> Semenuhani <laughs> Kezohar harakia meirim I can't believe you didn't call me. I like to be alone when a relationship ends. 
I get all dramatic, dress up in black, and I brew. <laughs> you would have thought that my degree in shy psychology would have helped with Manuel. Eh ben non. Fitzpatrick, when he takes out your tonsils. Maybe I should get my foot checked. I am curious about his bedside manner. I love your resilience. <laughs> What about yours? I made a decision. I've got goosebumps. Tell me. I've spent my life terrified of being abandoned. I don't know what's going to happen, but I got to learn to live with myself. I love Carl very much, and I filed for a divorce this morning. No blame. We both did the best we could. I love you. What is that supposed to mean? And what about Brian? Brian loves us both, so you see him as much as you want to see him. My new baby, that, that's what I want. And what about me? I don't know. I guess that's one of the questions that'll get answered as we go. We've done our aid story this year. Really. Really, Margaret? Really what? A city magazine is a, a lifestyle publication. I fail to see the logic here. Excuse me for interrupting here, but isn't your department fashions and isn't mine features? That's true, and aren't editorial meetings for the purpose of sharing ideas? You assigned a story to Laura, a good story, is true, but you had no real authority to assign it. And speaking for my department, I'd like to point out that City Magazine is neither a gay publication nor a medical journal. God, you are ignorant. We'll put the story on hold for now. Maybe we'll find a place for it in some other issue down the road. This month's meeting is over. No, Margaret, this is not over. Laura's written a really excellent story about AIDS. It. That's not true. As I'm trying to understand, I don't think that our readers are interested in another profile but intravenous drug users or prostitutes. Do you? Our readers are interested in the truth. And this is a story about two women, not in the high-risk group. Two women and the place that they went to, to cope, to try to cope. And one of those women is dead. Where's the other? This isn't only a story about me, Margaret. It's a story about you and me, Carrie. It's a story about you, Margaret. It's a story about you too, Horace. I came to work with this magazine because it had a vision. It dictated the trends. It forced the city to look at itself and ask questions. Now, there are a lot of important questions that need to be asked now. Unfortunately, there aren't enough answers. We stopped being journalists, haven't we? This story won't be buried on the back pages of some future issue market. It's a cover story. If City Magazine doesn't want to do it, I will take it someplace else and it will be published. Well, Margaret? Well, 
Are you finished? Yes. I'd like your resignation as editor of the fashion department on my desk by tomorrow morning. about starting a magazine. Blindfolded and single-handed. I wouldn't call you blindfolded, Captain. We're single-handed. <laughs> <laughs> 